Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I am going to be Bible journaling the book cover from The Promise of the Father by Steve Shell. And Steve Shell is known to me as Pastor Steve. He's my former pastor, and this is a brand new book that just came out. I just picked up my copy yesterday, so I have not yet read it. However, I happen to know it's his sermon series from 1 Corinthians chapters 12 to 14, all about how the gifts of the Spirit should function in the church when we gather together and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I know it's going to be an amazing book, and I'm really excited to dig into it. But this page is not about the content of the book, even though I am doing it in 1 Corinthians, because that's what the book is written about. But I thought I'd tell you a couple stories. The first one is how I came to be at the church that I'm currently at that used to be pastored by Steve Shell. I moved to this town, needed to find a church, but I had come from a mainline denomination and I was looking for that. It was what I was used to. We always gravitate toward the stuff we feel comfortable with and that's what I did. I went to all kinds of churches in the area looking for, okay, maybe a different denomination since I wasn't really thrilled with the one that was my denomination and just kept looking and looking. And the church that was closest to me was the one that I'm at now. And it was a Pentecostal church. And I was not about to go to a Pentecostal church because I kept saying, I'm not a Pentecostal. I didn't even know what that is. So I'm not going there. I want to go to a mainline church. That's what I'm used to. So I kept trying, but finally it came time. That was the last one that I hadn't tried yet. I went in with resistance. I was a little not happy about it, told the Lord so. But when I sat down and worship began, the Holy Spirit fell in a way I had never before experienced. I felt God's presence surround me almost physically. And I didn't even know what to do with that. It was scary because it was different. And I left that day thinking I'm not going back partially because it was scary, but partially because there were no women serving, no women on the worship team, no women ushers, no women anything anywhere. But the Lord kept telling me to go back. And so I did. I went back the next week. Fine, I'll show you again. This is not for me. And there were women serving again, because guess what? It had been women's retreat weekend, and I did not know that. <laughs> Oh, how the Lord works and has a little laugh at my expense all the time. Well, I have been there now since 2001, and it is 2021 as I speak at the moment. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful place to, to grow as a Christian. And I credit Pastor Steve with that because his focus on the Word of God is stronger than I have ever experienced at any other church. And was just woken up to so much through the teaching of Pastor Steve. And just the way he ran the whole church, everything was centered around the word of God. People's behavior was held to a godly standard. And it was unlike anything I'd experienced before. So thank you, Pastor Steve, for being that kind of leader. His preaching and his teaching are what he's really known for. Many of you out there may have heard Life Lessons or read Pastor Steve's books before and know what a, a genuine person he is, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what I loved about his teaching style because what he did when he would preach, he spent first the entire week studying whatever passage he was gonna be bringing a lesson on and digging into it, praying through it, reading as much as he could in all the commentaries and seeing what other people said, but always going back to ask the Lord, what is the truth? And what lesson do you want us to hear this week? And he always tested things by what does the rest of the Bible say? Not just what does some commentary say? And it was amazing to hear how he would dig through the word and understand it and look for those truths that are applicable to life. And I'd never heard anyone really make the Bible come alive for me in terms of what I do every day and how I live my life, the problems that I have and how to handle them. I didn't understand how much of that was really in the scriptures themselves to, to learn from. 
And the other thing that I loved about Pastor Steve's style is that he always brought some element of his own life into it. He would tell us about things that happened that he was challenged with. When he would fail, he would do something wrong and the Lord would discipline him and how he handled that and where he went for answers and the times that he didn't want to do what the Lord told him to do, but he knew that's what the Lord wanted him to do and he did it anyway. The times when somebody would say something, he'd say something back and then Later on, the Lord would say, you know, you need to go apologize for that thing. And he would go do it. He would go back, travel wherever he had to travel just to make an apology and make things right and live in the light with others. And I can't tell you how much it means to me to learn that someone like him has the same kinds of struggles that I do. A lot of times we hear pastors talk about giant life events, you know, and there was cancer in the family and we turned to the Lord and he saved us in less than such a way and brought us peace. And that's, that's one kind of sharing of vulnerability, but these daily smaller stories that pastor Steve would relate are the things we all live with every single day. And he had a way of making those come alive, helping me to understand that there was nothing super special about him as a pastor he had superpowers to be able to overcome his own will and be able to do what the Lord wanted. That somehow he was more capable of turning to the Lord more regularly than I was. But he told us that we were just as spiritual as he was. It didn't matter if we'd been to Bible college or not, or how much we had studied or prayed. Every Christian has the ability to overcome in the same ways that he overcomes and every Christian fails in the same ways that he fails. We all do this. And he didn't think of himself and still doesn't. I shouldn't talk about him in the past tense. He's still with us just in retirement. But every Christian has the ability to walk with Jesus. And we, we just need to see that and grasp hold of that. And, and be able to grab hold of the cross every time we need help because Jesus has been there and done it too. And intellectually, I know that, but boy, do I need to hear it from a regular person too, somebody here on this earth. And hearing it from Pastor Steve so regularly that he had the same struggles that I've got in my life every single day, that I find myself sometimes not even asking the old, what, what would Jesus do question, but I just think, what would Pastor Steve do? What would he have done in this situation? How would he talk to this person who just said thus and such? If they said it to him, what would he do? How would he act? And I've learned so much from that exercise in my mind, having all those years witnessing how he got himself through his own life. If he's watching this, thank you, Pastor Steve, for that gift of showing me that example, that real life example of being a regular human being but one who is in touch with the gifts of the Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit for help all the time. The text on my page is not the promise of the Father, but it's the gift of an extra Father. Because I feel like that's what Pastor Steve has been to me. God dropped me off on the doorstep of this church, and he did it at a time when the right person was in charge to deliver the right messages that my heart needed to hear. I was in a season when I was not only in need of discipline, but ready for it. Years prior to that, I probably wouldn't have been receptive to it. But God made sure it happened in the right time. He gave me this gift to grow me as a believer, as a child of his, in this season of my life. And I'm eternally grateful to have had an extra dad walking alongside of me in this time period. And I'm so glad that Pastor Steve is still out there writing books so everybody can continue to learn from his wisdom as well. I'm also grateful that I got to paint the cover of this book. Yes, that is one of my paintings. I did that for Pastor Steve before the book got printed. I sent him the painting itself as a gift. And I'm tickled pink that many people are starting to see my work now because of it. 
and I have sold much of my Christian art from my website. And I'm thrilled to know that that stuff is going to homes where people are going to understand the deeper spiritual significance of it, not just, oh, it's a pretty painting, but knowing what it means and understanding that is really important to me. So thank you to my Heavenly Father for the gifts that he has given me in Pastor Steve, in the church that I've been in, and this this life of discipleship that I take such joy in. And that's about all I have to say. I think I've been rambling long enough. So I will see you guys again next week with another video. I hope you have a blessed week. There's links in the doobly-doo if you're interested in buying that book or going to see some of that art that I spoke of. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.